If it's don't ask, don't tell, it is do not ask. And if you ask me, I'm not gonna tell. Yeah. Hi, my loves, it's Rowe. Welcome back. Today we're getting really juicy, and this is a follow up to the video I did about sex after prison. Somebody asked me to dive a little bit deeper about how I avoid temptations while my loved one is gone, temptations around intimacy, being touched by other men, having sex with other men, and, and those kind of things. So if you're interested in temptations while your husband is gone, to cheat or not to cheat, that's the question. And if I've done it in the past, if it's come between me and Adam, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I'm the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this really painful and hopefully one shot deal. Before we get started and deep dive into the juicy stuff, I just wanna show you guys, once again, I'm wearing my Adam necklace. So it is a name plate necklace. So there we go. I have a discount code for you guys because who doesn't need a name plate necklace like Carrie Bradshaw, especially one of your loved one that you can surprise them with while they're inside. You can wear it to visit. You can wear it in a photo shoot if you don't have visit right now. It's like $19 or something with our discount code and it's originally like 50 or something like that. So you can't beat it. It gets shorter. It gets longer. I've talked about this in other videos, but I will not take it off. <laughs> this is like my fifth video wearing this, but I just love it. It's Adam. It's just a reminder of him. Anyway, so let's talk about how I have stayed faithful if I've veered off and I've not been faithful and how I deal with temptations while my loved one's incarcerated. You guys know me, we're gonna start with a story time. I was really good friends with this girl that I used to work with. She was actually my boss at that point, but she was a lot younger than me. So she was my boss and then we started working out together at the same gym, like a group gym. So we were training partners and she knew about Adam because we were close and I thought it was okay to open up to her about it and she was supportive of it. She was never judgmental. We'll call her Samantha because I don't want to use her real name. So Sam and I went to this new gym and she was just recently single. She had just broken up with her boyfriend of a really long time. Sam meets this guy, Jay. They took a liking to one another. I mean, he was gorgeous. Who wouldn't take a liking to this kid? And he was so sweet and they just hit it off like that because Sam had like the best, most outgoing personality. He was in the hospitality business and it was like a match made in heaven. So they were hanging out and one day, Jay brings his friend named Danny into the gym and Danny was really friendly, he was cute, and he took a liking to me. I don't know if it was done on purpose as a setup, I'm not really too sure. But he was a cool guy and he had a really good personality and I could tell he was kind of into me but I was never inappropriate with him. I kind of flirted with him a little bit, I kind of walked a line and I knew what I was doing wasn't 100% appropriate but it, I didn't do anything wrong at that point and I don't know. It was my birthday coming up and my younger sister had a house down the shore, Jersey Shore. This, the show The Jersey Shore is 100% accurate. That's how we lived, at least in my day. My sister invites me to her shore house and she says I can invite whoever I wanted. I invited Sam and I of course invited Jay and I said that they could bring whoever they wanted and I invited a whole bunch of people. And with me was another really good friend of mine named Vinny and Vinny was everything you'd imagine somebody named Vinny to be. He was like 6'4", football player, like big rough and tumble guy. Super sweet, like a teddy bear on the inside, but he looked like a Vinny. That makes sense. So we're all out at this club. There's probably like 15 of us at this point. We're all hanging out. Jay shows up with Danny. My friend Sam's flirting with Jay. Danny's like really into me at this point because now we're, we have alcohol involved and we're all just kind of chit-chatting and alcohol's involved. So inhibitions are going out the door and I'm getting flirty with him because honestly, I'm still very young at this point and I liked the attention. I knew I wasn't gonna do anything with him. I knew I wasn't doing anything wrong, supposedly, but I liked the attention. It was nice to finally feel wanted by a guy. Not that Adam didn't make me feel wanted, he always did, but he was so far away and so unattainable and I couldn't have him. And just for once, I wanted to be a normal person. I wanted to have a night out. I wanted to flirt with a guy, get attention. I don't know why it snapped in my brain, but that day I did it. So now we're all hanging out and more drinks are coming and we're dancing and we're having fun. And yes, I'm being flirty with Danny and Sam's hooking up with Jay and I'm on the dance floor with Danny and, and Vinny's at the bar with a couple of other of our friends. And my sister and all of her friends kind of had a little too much to drink. So we were only two or three blocks away from their house. So they, in drips and drabs, they started walking home. So basically at the end of the night, it's me, Sam, Jay, Danny, 
Vinny at the bar, like making sure I'm okay watching me and maybe two or three other of our friends. Danny tries to make a move, tries to kiss me and I backed up and I was like, whoa. And then I pulled aside and I was like, doesn't he know I have a boyfriend? And she was like, I don't know, you want me to tell him? And I said, yeah, cause you know, that's mature. So we went back and we started dancing and she makes it a point to bring it up in conversation that I have a boyfriend. Danny gets pissed, pissed, like aggressively pissed. And he was like, what the f you have a boyfriend? You've been leading me on all night long, even before this, but you've been really like hardcore leading me on tonight, letting me think that, you know, maybe something could happen. You've been flirting with me. You've been picking up everything I've been putting down. I'm like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm friendly. You know, being a little bitch. If Vinny was not there that night, I could have gotten myself in a really big pickle, in a really big bind. My friend Vinny jumped up and was like, yo, bro, like leave her alone. Come on, let's go. We're, we're leaving. And he is a Vinny, so he was able to defuse the situation just because his presence alone is enough to intimidate Danny. Not that Danny couldn't defend himself, but people don't wanna get in a fight with the Vinny type, especially down the shore. You're gonna go to jail. And nothing happened between me and Danny, but that was wrong. That was absolutely wrong, absolutely wrong of me. First of all, it's wrong because it's disrespectful to my relationship. Second of all, it's wrong because I put myself in a dangerous situation. And third of all, it was wrong because had Vinny not been there, I mean, for so many different reasons it was wrong, but down to the nitty gritty, had Vinny not been there, I could have gotten hurt. I could have gotten the four letter R word. I could have gotten hit, who knows what could have happened. So I was playing with fire and I almost got burnt. Now I'm telling you this story because that next morning I woke up feeling like a piece of crap. I woke up and I was like, that's so wrong of me on so many different levels. If I don't wanna be with Adam, I don't have to be with Adam. If I wanna be with other people, I can be with other people, but I need to either talk to Adam about that and explain that maybe we can open up our relationship because there's nothing really black or white or right or wrong about a relationship like this because it's not normal, right? So either I need to have that conversation with him or I need to not do this anymore. I need to not lead guys on. I need to just focus on me and Adam. And I was young enough to be that stupid, but I was also old enough to be mature enough to say, I'm done with this. I don't like the way it feels. I wouldn't want him, if tables were turned, out there doing that to me. That's really when it clicked for me that I wasn't gonna feed into temptation. Just so you guys know, the next time I went to visit, I told Adam this story and I had that conversation with him. And here's the thing, I kind of told him in a way where I had the upper hand and I think that's wrong. Like I told him in a way where I was like, you can't do anything about it. Like I was out, I was flirting, I put myself in a bad position and it was wrong but I didn't do it in a way where I was like I apologize I did it in a way where like that guy blah 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 and I know that made him feel some sort of way and I didn't care because in my head at that point like I didn't do anything wrong so the only other time that Adam actually the one and only time that Adam ever got sort of jealous or acted jealous or I'm sure he's gotten jealous before but he voiced his jealousy to me was I had this friend named let's give him a name, Tim. And Tim was a friend of the family for many, many, many years. He was friends with my brother before he was friends with me. The way that I became friends with Tim was, I went away to school like far away. And when I came home, all of my friends from high school had stayed where they went away to school. And all of my really close friends were from college and they all lived in North Carolina. So my brother wasn't living at home at that point. He was living in Miami and he called this friend because he knew his friend was harmless. His friend was, I don't know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, just like this big burly goofy guy with this Brillo frizzy hair. And he was just so goofy. He never hooked up with a girl before in his life and he was just harmless. So my brother's like, do me a favor, my sister's home, take her out, like hang out with her and introduce her to people. So, because he knows I'm shy and introverted anyway and that's hard for me. So I became really friendly with this guy and we were always platonic friends. Like I was always his plus one for things and he had one of those head over heels, little boy crushes on me, but it was always harmless. He never made a move on me ever, 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 ever because he was too shy and awkward. But I also knew that, I knew that he had a crush on me and I actually have his number blocked and stopped talking to him after this happened with Adam because I realized I was 
not helping him in any way in his life. By me sticking around and remaining his friend and him so hopelessly in love with me, I was stopping him from finding a relationship because at this point, when I stopped being friends with him, he was in his mid 40s. He's a bit older than me and that's not fair of me. Regardless, Adam tells me in visit one time, he's like, you know, like you haven't been emailing me a lot and you've been going out with people and you've been hanging out with Tom a lot and I don't know, like what's up with you and Tom? And I was like, I started laughing right there and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I want to talk through this with you and res I respect you enough to get through this, but if you could only see what Tom looked like and acted like, and I know that's not confirmation for you, but I promise you nothing has ever happened between me and Tom. He's like a 45 year old virgin, like no, 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 no. And then after that, I stopped talking to Tom. But it was those two instances where I decided that I was not gonna put myself in a situation where I was gonna make Adam feel bad or make him question my loyalty to him because I was always faithful to him. I've never once cheated on him ever, unless you consider that little thing with Danny where we never even touched. It was just like flirting one night at a bar. But if you consider that cheating, then I guess I cheated on him. But it wasn't even like I had this emotional affair with him. It was one night of flirting words, no touching. How I don't give in to temptation, because of course we all have desires and needs and all that stuff is, I always joke and I say, I work out a lot. But God's honest truth, I do. And for me, that helps me. I've always been into working out, but it releases the same endorphins that having sex does. So it does help in a way. I mean, obviously it's not the exact same thing, but it helps in a way. And also I say this always about sex is it's like a diet, okay? You know, when you give up sugar or any food group or anything, and in the beginning, you have a taste of it, right? You have that, you know what it tastes like. You miss it so much. My God, the first week after giving up sugar is like torture. You crave it all day, every day. But eventually as time passes, you just kind of lose the taste for it. You don't crave it as much anymore because you forget what it tastes like. It's not right at the tip of your tongue. Sex is very, very, very similar where if you haven't had it in so long, yes, of course, in the beginning you miss it. And of course, to this day, 10 years later, I still miss it, but it's been so long, you crave it less, you miss it less. It's different than sugar or pizza or whatever. But I have people who literally just cannot wrap their heads around the fact that I am faithful to Adam and I have been all this time and I've not fed into temptation and it's okay with me, it is what it is. Like I miss it, but I don't, you know? I, I don't know how else to necessarily, I'm stuttering. I don't know how else to necessarily put words to that, but I don't really feel tempted anymore. And the other thing is, I don't put myself in situations anymore like I did with Danny. I don't put myself in situations where I will be tempted. And that doesn't mean I don't go out, I do. I need to go out, I need to go enjoy myself, but as easy as wearing a fake ring if you have to. I don't have a ring, but if I needed to, I mean, there's been plenty of times before Adam where some of my girlfriends and I would go out and buy like fake CZ rings because cubic zirconia, like, like fake engagement rings, like fake wedding rings. We would go out and buy them and wear them out to the club because we just didn't want to be bothered by guys. I mean, is that foolproof? No, sometimes they say a ring will be game on, but usually that's girls, not very good hearted girls, going after men. Like one of my girlfriends, after she got married, her husband was still a bartender, we were young, and she's like, he's gotten hit on more with that ring than when he did before that. Usually it doesn't work the other way, although men will hit on a lady no matter what. But point is, it could be as simple as just wearing a ring when you go out to a, a bar or in a situation where there's gonna be people that could potentially hit on you. Wearing something like a name necklace, you know, cause that'll strike up a conversation. Oh, who's Adam? That's my husband. He, they don't have to know where he lives at all. Just keep yourself out of situations where there will be temptation there. Don't pull the situation where I did with Danny because I just constantly ask myself if tables were turned and Adam was out here, would I want him acting like this? Would I want him behaving like this with a woman? then I'm not gonna do it to him. And the last thing that I wanna leave you with is this. There's no right or wrong, like I said before. If you need to fulfill that physical part of your life because you feel unfulfilled without it, it's a big thing for you, then talk to your loved one about opening up your relationship. There are so many ways you could do it. I have friends who their loved one, you know, they're a woman in a relationship with a man and they're 
agreement is that she can only hook up with women, not other men. Sometimes it's hook up with whoever you want. Don't ask, don't tell. I just don't want to know about it. One thing I do advise though, is if that's the case, you can't tell him about it. I've had friends who he says that that's been the agreement all along. And then one day he decides he wants to ask. She answers honestly, and he gets in his feelings and jealous. If it's don't ask, don't tell, it is do not ask. And if you ask me, I'm not going to tell the end because it's just going to cause for issues in the relationship. Or he might say, yes, you could do that. And I want to hear all about it. And like, tell me in detail because I want to feel like I'm there. Nobody can tell you how to handle this situation. Nobody can tell you what to do. But it boils down to being honest. You have to have those tough conversations. You have to be able to talk about it and you have to be honest with one another. If you're having a tough time out here and you don't wanna be faithful anymore, you don't wanna do this anymore, you want somebody there by your side every day, you get to check out girl, but you have to be, or, or guy, but you have to be honest about it and tell him, I can't do this anymore. I need somebody here. Maybe, maybe that means me dating other people and us just staying friends or losing touch. And maybe when you get out, we'll try again. But right now I want to live my life with somebody by my side. So there's that. That's how I personally don't feed into temptation. That's how I live my life. I fudged up that once, maybe twice, not really, Tom wasn't messed up at all. I mean, I was platonically friends with Tom way before Adam was back in the picture. And just so you guys know, Adam and Tom were not the same group of friends. They were from totally separate, so they didn't know each other before. Uh, I didn't even know Tom until after college because he was my brother's friend first. That might be a question that you guys have. Let me know if this stems more questions. I love being honest and talking about this kind of stuff with you guys because it doesn't make me uncomfortable whatsoever. It's my life. I share it on YouTube for you guys to learn from or to be entertained by, so that's it. If you have anything, let me know. If you're interested in my first video where this question stemmed from on sex after prison and what that's going to be like and people's fears and how I responded to the question I got about that, just click that video right up there. And if you're not already subscribed, I'm offended. Please do that because I don't ever want you missing a future video by clicking that little circle there. Or you could always do it by clicking the box below and turn on that bell so you know when I post a new video, you're the first to know every time. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.